In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this basic shape here in Blender very, very quickly using very basic beginner vanilla operations in Blender. Let's go. Before we get started, if you're brand new to hard surface modeling and want to learn our entire workflow in about two weeks of time with just 30 to 60 minutes a day, check out our accelerator program in the link in the top of the description. We've done this for thousands of students and we can do this for you as well. All right, so we're going to start with a basic cube and then I'm just going to scale the cube a bit on the Y. I'm going to press S and then Y and then I'm going to scale this on the Z a little bit, S and then Z, just like that. And then I'm going to press Control A to apply the scale. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these two edges here on the top and we're going to bevel them. Now, whenever I go in and out of object mode and edit mode, I use a tool called Machine Tools. I would highly recommend getting this. It's going to save you tens of thousands of clicks. So it's five bucks. Pick it up. Um, basically, I can just go in and out of edit mode very, very quickly. So I'm going to go into edge mode here. I'm going to take these two edges right here actually these two, then I'm going to press control B. I'm going to scroll up a few times and then press the C key to turn on the clamp overlap feature. Then I'm just going to go ahead and press M and then merge by distance because this edge right here in the middle is going to be overlapped as you can see. So I'll select everything M and then merge by distance to get rid of that. Next, I'm just going to go down here and then I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do the opposite edges. So these two edges right here, I'm going to press control B to bevel that and then same idea M to merge by distance. Then I'm just going to move this down a little bit on the Z axis, just like that. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to right click and then shade auto smooth. What that's going to do is it's going to smooth out all those hard edges that you see right there. Now we can go ahead and press shift A. We can go to mesh and then we can go to cylinder here. Then I'm just going to change this to 64 vertices so we have more resolution. And then I'm going to press R, Y, and then 90 to rotate that. Then we can just hop into side view here, scale this down a little bit, and then just kind of move this up right to about that position. Then we can scale this on the X as well. Right click to shade auto smooth. And now I just want to run a Boolean operation here. Now, usually I would be using tools like hard ops or box cutter, but since this is a beginner's tutorial, I'm going to show you the vanilla way. So we're going to go here to this object and we're going to add a Boolean modifier. Then we're going to choose the object that we want to use as a Boolean, this one right here. Just going to select that. And then one thing I like to do, this is optional, is I like to go here with the object selected. I like to go to this menu and then go to viewport display and then display as wire. So now what you can actually do is you can see this Boolean live in action. Now again, Hard Ops and Box Cutter does this automatically. So if you have those tools, you can just, you know, ignore that part. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control A to apply the scale. Now I want to show you why, because let's say I want to add a reverse bevel. A reverse bevel is basically where I take this face instead of beveling this way, I can press Alt N, flip that, and then I can bevel in the opposite direction because I flipped the normals, all right? Now you're going to see it's a little bit biased, this bevel in this direction because we haven't yet applied this scale. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go into object mode, control A, apply the scale, and then I'm just going to go in and then same thing, flip that with alt N, control B to bevel that. You can make that chamfer as large as you want, doesn't really matter. And then if you just want to quickly get that shape on the other side as well, you can just go into edit mode, select everything, and then go to mesh, symmetrize. And in this case, I'm on the positive X, the line is the positive, and then I'm going to go into the negative X direction. So I need to change this from positive X to negative X. And if that's not working, let's, um, let's see real quick. Let's try this one more time. Let's go ahead and select this mesh symmetrize and then we're going to go to maybe I have it in the wrong direction here. Let me check. Okay. So this is a good example of um, something you might overlook. Even I still overlook it. The reason this is occurring is because I actually rotated that cylinder. So if I press the N key and I go to item, you're going to see the rotation here is set to 90 degrees. So blender is interpreting this on the local axis, not the global axis. Okay. 
Very easy fix, just press Control A to apply that rotation. And now when I use the symmetrize here, it's going to uh, work just fine, as you can see. So now we basically have this shape right here, which looks very clean. Now one thing that I like to do personally is I like to right click and then add a new collection. And I call this my Boolean collection. You can name this whatever you want. And then usually I just go in here, I select my object, my Boolean object, this one. Then I press M to move that to the Boolean collection. And what you can actually do is you can just turn this collection on and off whenever you want. So very, very easy technique. Now what I want to do is I want to turn this back on. I want to take this Boolean object, this one right here, and we're going to add the same shape down here. I'm just going to duplicate this with Shift D, R, Z, 90 to rotate around the Z. And then I can just go into the side view here, just kind of move that down, kind of scale that up. And then we're just going to, we're going to need to scale this on the Y. But if we scale this on the Y, that chamfer is going to start flattening. So what I would recommend doing instead is go into edit mode and then just select with the box key, the B, just press B and then box select that. And now when I move this, it's going to maintain that, uh, that scale there. So I can do that. And then this time I can just symmetrize. This time it's going to be on the negative Y to positive Y. So mesh symmetrize. I'm going to go negative Y to positive Y. And again, like I said before, make sure you apply that rotation. So mesh, symmetrize, negative Y to positive Y. And then we're just going to run a difference Boolean here as well. So select this object. We could actually just duplicate this Boolean here. And then we can just choose this, um, this cylinder here. If you can't select it, you can just go right here and choose it that way. Very easy. And now we have a cool shape like this. Now again, guys, if you're using any sort of add-ons, this process is going to be way quicker, but I'm trying to show you the vanilla workflow so you kind of understand intuitively what is happening. And this is also, by the way, the exact workflow that we're teaching in our accelerator program. So again, if I'm going too quickly for you, I'd recommend picking that up. That way you have the full foundation in about two weeks of time. So one thing I like to do just for like a design principle is I like to make sure I'm just going to turn off the overlays here. You want to make sure that the objects are kind of flowing naturally with the shape. Now, what I mean by that is if I move this up here, this is pretty bad design language. But if I move this down, you're going to see it's basically kind of mirroring. It's, it's called echoing in design. It's kind of echoing that shape here on the bottom. So that's why I want to keep that circle down here towards the bottom as well. Otherwise, we don't really get that echoing effect very nicely. So just kind of a design element there. All right, so this looks pretty cool. And now what I want to do is just turn off the Boolean collection, see what we have so far. And I think this looks uh, pretty clean. Now what I want to do is I want to press Shift A to add in a mesh plane. I'm going to rotate this over the X axis by 90 degrees. I'm going to scale this. Now the nice thing with planes is it's just two dimensional, right? So I can just scale this. I don't need to like, you know, choose any axis. I can just scale this up. And now what I want to do is I want to run a very small solidification here and you'll see why. I'm going to go here to add modifier, generate, and then solidify. However, with solidifications in Blender, what's going to happen is it's just going to move in one direction. If you want it to move equally in both directions, what you want to do instead is change the offset here to zero. And now it's actually going to offset evenly in both directions here. So I'm going to change this to a very low value, maybe 0 0.002. That might even be too small, but we'll see. And then I just want to select this object. Again, I'm just going to duplicate this Boolean here, remove that old one, and then we can just go in here and choose that plane as the Boolean object. And then we can just move this to the Boolean's collection as well. And you're going to see we kind of have this cool effect right here. Now, again, I just like to do this in general. I like to make sure my Booleans are displayed as a wire. You can do that very easily in this menu. And then you can kind of see, you know, if I want to go in here, since this Boolean has a solidify modifier, I can, you know, actively change the thickness whenever I want. This is called a non-destructive workflow because I can change these settings whenever I want. So in my opinion, if you go too large on the thickness here, this looks very weird. I'm just going to make this very low, like 0 0.002, just because I think that looks a bit cleaner. And then I can go ahead and move that back to the Booleans collection with the M key. 
And I mean, look at how quickly we made this shape. It took us a few minutes with very basic operations and you're already making designs that look cleaner than you know 99% of people just by using basic commands and basic design principles. All right, so, so far so good. Now the next thing I would like to do here is I like to press Shift A to add in a mesh cube. Gonna go into side view and scale this down. Then we're gonna move this down as well. And then scale this a bit on the Z and then just a bit on the general axis, just press S, kind of move it to about there. And then we'll scale this on the X as well. And then I'm just gonna, once again, we're gonna go in here, we're going to duplicate these Booleans, Boolean three, then I'm gonna choose this as my Boolean object. And then once again, let's just go in here and make sure this is displayed as a wire so we can make adjustments. Now all I need to do is decide where I want to place this boolean. I'm just going to kind of, you know, find a decent spot. I think right there would be good. And then what I want to do is I want to run a bevel just because it'll look cleaner. Now if I press tab and then go into edge mode and I try to bevel this, you're going to see the bevel here is a little bit skewed. And again, to fix that, you just go in here, you press control A, apply the scale, and now I can actually go in here very quickly and just, um, you know, add in a bevel just like that. And there we go. Then I can press M and then move this to the Booleans collection. And also if you get these weird edges, you can either shade auto smooth on the main object. If that doesn't work, just make sure you shade auto smooth on your Boolean object as well. And that should go away. And this is why I recommend using bevels because you can see when I add in a bevel right there, it doesn't have that hard edge anymore. It looks significantly better. And just to show you real quick, I'll just undo it looks way better with a bevel, as you can see. Now, if we zoom in here, I'm not sure how well you can see it with YouTube's compression, but there are some very minor shading errors right here around the bevel. If you can't see that well, I could go to a different mat cap and it's probably gonna be you know, quite a bit more obvious. But basically the reason for that, just to show you, if I go in here and I just apply this Boolean just temporarily, I'll undo it in a second, but when I apply that, I also need to apply this one right here so you can see everything. When I do that, you're gonna see we have n-gons here. And whenever you have an n-gon that is being bent, it is going to cause shading errors. That's why there's no shading errors down here, but on the n-gons, we do have shading errors. And just to show you that visually, so you kind of have like an intuitive understanding, if I take a plane, and maybe this plane has, you know, maybe this is the basic n-gon, right? So we have an n-gon right here. If I move or bend one of these vertices in a different direction, you can see this causes a shading error. That is essentially what's happening here in this area. So the easiest way to mitigate this in hard surface modeling is to isolate this shading. And the way we do that, let me just undo um, these Boolean applications. I don't actually want to apply them. So just undo that. Now what I actually want to do here is I just want to go to this section. Let me just find this particular Boolean, the one I was using before, this one here. And all we need to do is we just need to go in. This is very easy. And since I already have an edge here in the middle, I can just press Control B to bevel that. And we're just gonna go to about here. By the way, guys, uh, if my computer is lagging a bit, it is because I'm uh, traveling at the moment on a laptop, so you shouldn't have that issue. And then you're gonna see, just by doing that, it has basically isolated the shading. So it's still gonna be there, but it's not really gonna be noticeable anymore. You can see that it's uh, a lot cleaner than it was before. The only time, you know, the end gons and things like this will matter is if you're deforming the object. You can still use, you know, meshes like this outside of Blender or even in game engines. Your goal there is just to mitigate the shading. It's not to remove it completely. It's just to make it not so obvious. All right, now the next thing I want to do here is the basically the same thing to the upper portion. I'm going to add in a cube. I'm going to scale this on the Y just a little bit, move that down. And then again, we're just gonna go in here, gonna duplicate that Boolean, going to choose this object here. And then like I said before, we're gonna change this over to a wire. Then I can just go in, apply that scale. You should get the idea by now. Maybe scale this a bit on the X axis. Then I can just go in and then, you know, bevel just like that. So we should have a 
pretty, you know, decent looking bevel up there. And then maybe I can move this, I don't know, maybe like right here should be fine. We're going to shade auto smooth. And then you're going to see we do have some shading errors right here. For right now, let me move this to the Boolean collection. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to move this down just a bit more. I think it'll look better. And then just to mitigate that shading right there, all I need to do really is I just need to go in and add some loops. Now when I go into edit mode, the reason we can't see that Boolean is simply because I haven't applied um, that Boolean yet. So this one right here, obviously if I apply it and then go into edit mode, you know, you'll see it. But all these Booleans are still live, they're still non-destructive. If you do want to see them in edit mode, you can actually turn on this button right here and that'll show all your Booleans in edit mode as well. So what I'm going to do here is just, again, just going to add in a loop cut, I'm going to scroll up a little bit, and that should basically mitigate the shading almost completely. Now we have the same issue here for the inside, so this time I just have to go in, I have to find that upper Boolean, so it's going to be one of these here, this one right here. And then same idea, I'll just go to that Boolean and then just add in some loop cuts and that should mitigate the shading over there as well. The only real way to remove shading completely is with perfect, you know, quad topology, right? So if you, if you know, this bothers you, you either need, you know, cleaner topology where you're not using end guns and having these bent polygons, or what I recommend is just isolating the shading. You'll see even in like AAA video games, there's still shading errors on the models. You'll see them if you zoom in far enough. I made a video a few years ago going into the Star Citizen video game and the designers used this exact Boolean technique and instead of just, you know, retopologizing everything, they just mitigate the shading. It's still obvious, you can still see the shading, but it's not a big deal. And obviously that's for video games particularly. You know, a lot of my viewers don't even, you know, do this for video games. Just an example there. Now look at how quickly we made this shape. It didn't require any sort of complex operations or technical workflows. All we had to do was use some basic commands, some basic booleans, and just a little bit of basic Blender knowledge. And you can make pretty much anything you want with this exact workflow. And this is why I say you can learn hard surface modeling in about two weeks of time. Like people still have trouble believing this, but it only takes about 30 to 60 minutes a day over a two week period. We've done this for thousands of students at this point. So if you don't believe me, look at the student results, right? So if you're interested in learning our entire hard surface modeling workflow, make sure you pick up our accelerator program in the link in the top of the description. That's how you make very basic hard surface models in Blender. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.